Hello DevOps people, happy hump day. How is everyone? I hope you're doing well. It's already the middle of the week. Uh, from here it's downhill to the weekend and uh, let's see what we can get finished before it comes. I've been working heavily on my Twitch chatbot because it's a lot of fun refactoring code and seeing how it becomes clearer and uh, better structured and all these things and um, uh, I'd like to continue that today. But uh, today we're going to work on a little bit of functionality as well. I'd like to give my bot a memory. Be uh, up until now it doesn't have any dynamic stuff so it can't store uh, data and it can't retrieve data that hasn't been hard-coded into its business logic and uh, of course we need to change that. And uh, so I need to attach some kind of database. And uh, I thought about using something like Redis because it uh, allows us to uh, store JSON documents that can be can contain any kind of data. We don't need to build a database schema like with a, re a relational database. Um, and uh, well, if I'd like to run my bot and a Redis database, um, I probably need some kind of um, deployment infrastructure, at least for my development environment. And since I don't want to run Redis natively uh, right on my workstation, because it'll in interfere with other stuff, um, we're going to explore uh, how to deploy these things using Docker. And later, uh, I'll probably set up uh, some kind of uh, Docker hosting, um, maybe Kubernetes or something similar, and um, we'll deploy it for production in there. But um, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, I'll probably start with uh, a, an ephemeral memory where I simply store stuff in a hash or something just to get the design right and the uh, interfaces between the storage class and my bot infrastructure, things like that. Now, uh, not in order to not make this a two-hour monologue, please um, pop into chat if you have any questions. If there's anything you'd like to ask, ask away. I'll happily answer. And if there's anything else you'd like to contribute or to share, feel free to do so. This is an interactive thing here. All right, so um, I've um, explored GitHub Actions earlier today because um, I was sorely missing continuous integration. I wanted to have some kind of feedback if my test suite actually is green because um, more, uh, more often than not, I actually pushed stuff to GitHub that I didn't test beforehand. And um, now that I've uh, set up GitHub Actions, I get feedback if something is not right and if I tag a release in the master branch I can also deploy my gem right to Ruby gems and have a proper release process. I have to say uh, GitHub Action, this was the first time I um, tried out GitHub Actions. It's pretty neat. It um, has a lot of pre-setup stuff and um, I had to experiment a bit, but uh, I think, um, yeah, after an hour or so, I had my my basic CI system in place, and um, I'm looking forward to see how it will support me in releasing stuff that's not broken. That's that. Let me see if there is any pull request. No, there isn't. And my development repositories are clean as well. They are both on master. Let's make sure I have the latest version of both my actual bot and my bot library, the Twitch bot gem. That's up to date. Good. So let me take a look if there is any showstopper here that I need to tackle first but uh, yesterday I made this mistake of 
uh, thinking, uh, let's do this uh, quickly. And then it took up all the stream uh, for more than two hours. So I'll be more careful today. Channel is not a configuration item. That's more of a design thing. Uh, yesterday I introduced a configuration class that takes everything the bot needs to know about uh, the world it lives in. For example, the credentials we need to um, authenticate with Twitch chat. And um, at the moment I'm still passing in the channel name as a separate argument to my chat client. And having the config class in place, that's not necessary anymore. Channel is just another configuration item. However, um, that's sh that should be a quick refactor that I can do um, at another time. Then we have the issue that I'd like to tackle today. The bot has no memory. I also make it a, um, a habit of um, uh, wording issues as actual issues. So as something negative that needs to be remediated. Um, so I don't write bot needs a database or something like that. Um, I rather describe the issue that I have because that, um, well, that's the gist of things, first of all. And second, I don't um, preclude finding a solution. I don't describe a potential solution, uh, which will always be only the first solution that comes to mind, uh, despite there maybe being other even better solutions. So by not describing any solution like add Redis database or something like that, um, I leave it open to future me how to resolve this. And maybe um, I don't get to tackle that until next month, hypothetically, don't go away. Um, uh, and uh, until then I learned of a new database that's much, much better than Redis. Um, then it's a good thing not to write in here that we we'll, that we are going to use Redis if uh, another more capable solution turns up. Event handle registration is tedious, but uh, uh, I have an, uh, a solution for that already prepared. So that should be an, uh, another quick thing. Allow registering event handlers from a directory. That's in, that's a, uh, still not I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm on the fence with that. Um, event handler code relies on explicit delegation to client. That's a convenience thing. Twitch specific tags missing is something uh, that's the, uh, that's an actual issue, but it hasn't cropped up in, uh, uh, in uh, practice yet. Threat lifecycle control, not obvious. That might actually, yeah, that is more or less solved. Message queue isn't thread safe, that's correct, but we haven't had any issues yet. Command handlers could be more dry, that's correct, and test coverage low, that's something that I intend to um, resolve over time. So yeah, I think we can go right into our bot has no memory issue. Uh, so that is issue number 16, so I'll create a new branch 16 memory and uh, I always tend to run um, tests first just to make sure that everything is still working because there's nothing more embarrassing and um, uh, infuriating than trying to find the cause for breaking tests in your recent changes despite the causes being elsewhere. So let's make sure everything is green. Rubocop doesn't have any complaints and our 24 tests are green as well. That's amazing. Okay, so. Let me think how to approach this in a test-driven development manner. I think we can actually do some TDD here because uh, I don't rely on anything that's in code right now. So I don't have the excuse that it's hard to write tests for other people's code. Um, and I guess we can simply introduce a test. 
for a storage class that we can later um, then extend to something like storage redis or something. Okay, now let's start with a few unit tests. So they call it storage spec.rb. Mm. Let's start with describe Twitch bot storage. Shall we uh, call it memory? I think memory is, is, is neat. Twitch bot memory. So we'll have to rename the file as well. Twitch bot memory. Okay. Now, um... I guess we'll create a store method. And we'll assume we'll have a simple key value store. So we might start implementing that with a simple hash. That's ephemeral, of course. Uh, if we restart the bot, then it will forget everything. But um, we can then uh, replace that with something like Redis uh, that works as a uh, key value store as well, but a persistent one. So describe store do. mem equals described class new don't think there's anything we need for initialization yet so we'll simply do mem store foo bar expect mem retrieve foo to equal bar Okay, so of course, if we run this right now, well, first of all, Rubocop will complain a lot. Uh, how is describe store an empty example group? Oh yes, of course, it doesn't have an it. It persists a value for a key. Okay, that does make more sense. The first argument to describe should be the class or module being tested. Uh, I think this um, complaint is caused by uh, the memory class not existing yet, and we'll see that when I do a bundle exec rspec spec um, twitch bot memory. Mm. 
Lip Twitch mod. No, wait. I need to move this file. I created it accidentally in the wrong spot. Spec Twitch bot memory spec. Here we go. Okay, an error occurred. Uninitialized constant R spec. Yeah, we'll need to fix that. That's a capital S. Now there's no un, uh, no constant Twitch bot memory, and um, yeah, so uh, that's how test driven development works. I uh, describe a behavior in my test, and then I let the errors that occur naturally um, guide my coding, and will always fix the test and nothing more. So if there is no constant Twitch bot memory, we'll make sure that there is one and nothing more. So let's go into here. No, not a new folder. A new file, memory.rb, wrong directory here. And here we can Twitch module dot class memory. Uh, that's enough code to fix this error, right? Now we have a constant. And we don't have to include that uh, file in our bot.rb. relative bot slash memory okay now we get an undefined method store let's fix that error Now we have a wrong number of arguments. Slayer Darth, hey, welcome back. We haven't talked in a while. How are you doing? I hope you're staying safe over in the UK. Yeah, we need uh, um, two arguments, namely key and value. And now our expectations that we can retrieve this uh, key value part pair again um, breaks and I'll fix that by implementing it. Physics and chemistry books. So um, have you moved on from maths to, to physics and chemistry or uh, is that on top of everything? Explain. So we'll have, um, we need some kind of storage. So um, we'll actually create a private attribute key value store. Which we are going to initialize with an empty hash and that means we can actually say at kv store key equals value which still doesn't uh, fix our undefined method retrieve Maths, chemistry, and physics. Yes, and uh, of course you are right. Uh, there are a lot of overlaps between that, especially between maths and uh, physics. So let's add a method retrieve, where we just retrieve a 
the value for a key. So we'll return KV store key. And here we go. And between physics and chemistry. Yeah, I'd say um, physics builds on maths and chemistry then builds on physics. Physics was my second favorite uh, class back in, in school. And uh, so uh, if uh I, I had had I not been um completely convinced that I'm going to study computer science uh, I'd probably have uh, studied physics and I probably would have struggled with maths a lot because uh, I'm I'm too lazy for that but uh yeah I did struggle with maths and computer science as well all righty so let's add a comment quickly before one pocket pimp drops in. Um, manage a key value store for our bot. That's the sole purpose of this class. Let's see if Rubocop has any other complaints. No, it doesn't. I have no idea actually how Germany uh, ranks nowadays in terms of STEM subjects. Um, back in, oh God. Back in my day, uh, there were a few universities um, that uh, ranked very highly in terms of uh, science subjects like maths and uh, CS and physics. On the other hand, there were, there were a lot of uh, universities also um, uh, who ranked highly in, in humanities and, uh, and arts. So uh, liberal arts, and um, so I'm I'm not sure uh, how things are. Yeah, exactly. I actually studied in Karlsruhe. However, I started not at the uh, uh, uni, but uh, at... Um, uh, I'm not sure how, how that would be called in English. Uh, so it's uh, a little bit less challenging than university. And uh, you, you, uh, I only got a, a BS um, in, in computer science there. Uh, you, in order to, to have a master's degree, I would have uh, uh, to study at uh, KIT, as it's known nowadays. Yeah, something like that. Sounds about right. So the... The, the the degree I, I finish with um, is equivalent to a bachelor honors, which actually, well, it did open a few doors, I guess. But uh, now that I'm completely unemployable, doesn't matter anymore. I think now um, I really um, benefit from from the actual ec education, but not from from the, the the degree I have on paper. Why study CS when you already have 
practical experience. Yeah, that's 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 correct. I think, um, except probably if you want to work at Google, where you probably still need a PhD in everything, even if you want to work uh, as a janitor. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, uh, so um, with if I look at me as an employer, um, I'd probably look at the actual education and training a person has but that will not depend on having a, some kind of a university degree or something like that it could also be that someone has been a lifelong learner and um, uh, learned stuff themselves all the time and built their knowledge that way um, that's something that i value very very highly not only because uh, that's that's how i work but also because that's required in nowadays uh, in, in, in today's uh, uh, IT environments where you can't rely on, on knowledge that you've accumulated years ago. Um, there's always something new. And um, so you need to be able to always learn. And uh, so having the ability to learn is much more valuable to me as an employer than um, having learned, regardless of the degree to which you've learned. All right, so um, our very pedestrian uh, key value store is working. And um, I guess why not um, try it out? So uh, let me quickly bump the version of my library. So I guess that's now a minor version bump new feature but nothing breaking we can all, uh, also describe our change here uh, we'll probably need um, the client to manage the storage so uh, there's a little bit more than we need to do and um, I'll already document that, what I have in mind here. Uh, client provides a persistent memory in form of a key value store. So not only do we need the storage class, we also need to instantiate a storage uh, interface in our client class. So I guess that's uh, here where we not only need to just test a trigger and channel now, so we should also have a memory class. which means we need to use client memory store and we expect client memory retrieve That's that, which means that this does not work yet. We'll have to add memory to our client here, which means uh, that's going to be another private attribute here. And we'll simply instantiate that up here.
Okay. Oh, but now. Still doesn't work. Private method. Oh, it's a private method. No, it shouldn't be. Memory needs to be a public one. So, uh, now we are at the point where I can install this gem locally, so I can use it in my Twitch bot up here. So we create another branch and we'll call that, um, quote, storage. I'd like to extend the quote handler to also be able to store stuff. Uh, of course. Uh, Quote storage. And we'll bundle update Twitch bot. It's not going to find a new version in Ruby Gems, but uh, it'll find it locally. So it actually upgraded from 3.0 to 3.1. And now we can use the memory method in our quote command handler. Or oh, let's change it. Uh, I'd like to be independent from my file system so um, I'd like to extend the plan handler actually uh, so let's uh, jump to the plan memory branch here and delete the quote storage branch we'll, we won't need that and instead of using the plan file here, uh, I'd like to be able to run this bot in the cloud as well. So uh, I can't rely on a local file anymore. Instead, I'd like to have a, a plan set command and then the, the plain plan command that retrieves the plan uh, again. So um, let's actually write a test for that. Guess. Oh, let's write it from scratch. It stores a new plan. I create a new client. And then going to send this uh, message. We'll submit it to the handler. And we'll call the handler. And then we'll check that the client got a message. Plan set two. This is a test. 
in order to check that, we need to mock the send message class. Cannot load such file. Oh, that might be because we haven't added our new files to the repository yet, and that uh, means um, the rake install won't find these files. Um, let's do another update. However, that shouldn't be necessary. Okay, so uh, instead of plan set to this is a test, we actually um, got a response with the current plan because the handler doesn't know the plan set subcommand yet. That's something we'll have to change. So, um... Instead of output plan file, we'll call it uh, handle plan command. And but so far, we only can output the plan file, which means the Test will still fail, however, we'll have to actually parse the rest of the message. And let me see what we actually get as a message. Uh, that's the user message class, and that returns the text of the full message. And command arcs returns the rest of this. Text words splits by white space. One pocket pimp, welcome to Fullstack Live. How are you on this nice Wednesday afternoon? It's hump day. Okay, so uh, I get my whole thing here split by white space. So Uh, we can use event text. No, uh, uh, what's what is it? Uh, it's command arcs. And we can actually now use arcs shift. to get the sub command and now we can say if sub command equals set we can client memory store plan Plan is the rest of the arcs 
array joined to a string again. And Uh, instead, we'll use output plan file, but it's not a file anymore. So we'll make this more generic. Output plan. And plan is actually client memory retrieve plan. So we'll split that as well. We can say um, save plan So that should do it. Let's see if that fixes our test. No, not yet. Uh, we can't use shift on this array. Okay. Shift is always uh, something that uh, is always a destructive operation, apparently. OPP writes, Bueno, trying to figure out why this server won't respond to Hyper-V Manager. Well, because it's Windows. Mm, still doesn't work. We don't uh, send a message. So we actually need to fix this. Uh, plan set two. Now the store store did work and the retrieve didn't anymore. Yeah, that might be because we are Oh how does retrieving that not work anymore? Let's see output plan client memory retrieve plan. Oh, we don't store it uh, anymore. Um, we need to change our test, I think. Where's my plan command handler? Spec. So, uh, So we'll have to rename this, respond with the current plan. And down there, we'll say updates the current plan.
Oh, wrong time up. Okay. Now we need something else. And that is make sure that you folks do not modify my plan. So, in this case, if the message comes from someone else, then we need to return a permission denied. Yep. And that didn't work. So far, uh, we don't have any authorization in place. So we'll need to change that. We'll call that update plan or uh, announce plan if event user equals client channel <sighs> else client send message permission denied. That's interesting. Let's take a look. Oh, let's actually debug this specific test. So here we are. Uh, how does our message look like? It's a user message from someone else. And our handler is a plan command handler. Test channel. Bot name is test. That's actually not the best idea. Oh no, the, the bot name test is okay. We are running in test channel, so test channel is the owner of the channel. Okay. And OK, 
Okay, so let's go into next. Oh, I should have used step here. Mm. Try again. So now we are in call. Event still is. Oops. is true. Command aliases is plan or project. So we'll step into handle plan command. Arcs is nil. Ah, uh, yes. It's not nil anymore, I think. Subcommand is actually set. Oh, wait. Where is our authentication? I think I added that at the wrong location, didn't I? Oh, I did. I did it in update plan. Okay, so that should happen further up here, I'd say. Because update plan should actually update the plan. things and uh, I've actually deleted no I've not deleted the binding pry that needs to go okay syntax arrow okay some kind of uh, If and oh, yeah, still doesn't work. That's interesting. Event users test channel. We need to use client channel name, okay.
Event is something else. Event uh, chan uh, client channel name is test channel. You should already be able to s to ask. Oh. Where are we? I'm already in call, so. Update allow is false. Looks like it works. Nice. So let's go ahead and restart our production of bot. Nice. That is grounds for celebration and to take a bathroom break. I'll be right back. And I'm back, much more relaxed. Okay, so our bot has some kind of memory, but it's still um, ephemeral memory. So if I restart the bot, it'll forget my plan. And that's why I'm not uh, yet going to um, revamp the quote handler to be able to store new quotes. 
um, I'll probably need some kind of uh, uh, authorization system as well to open up these features so uh, that everyone can use them in uh, within the correct limits. So that's going to be an issue that I'm going to write down. So one pocket pimp, if you're still around, did you find out what the issue with your virtualization is? Nope. Well, oh, sorry to hear that. Um, so I write down. Authorization. Yes. So I write in order to open up chat commands to everyone we need to have an authorization feature that allows to group sort users into groups. Force rebooted. Well, if a reboot solves the the issue, fair play. Fair play to you. Apparently, we don't handle the inner workings of that server, so it will forever be a mystery. Yeah, it's going to be. But uh, yeah, seems that uh, is not your concern in the first place. If the inner workings are someone else's problem. Okay, so we're, we are still lacking an authorization feature, and that authorization feature will, of course, also um, be based on our persistent memory. Uh, I don't want to uh, assign permissions uh, every time I restart my bot, so uh, that's uh, uh, something uh, that I work on in the future. We'll first have to make our memory persistent. Which means we need, we, need, we need to have some kind of database or we can um, add or we can simply dump our memory to a file. That'll do for the moment as well. However, dumping to a file is, isn't very cloud native because um, in, in most deployment environments I'm not going to have a persistent file system either so uh, I guess I rather um, open the box named docker and try and um, run my bot inside docker and uh, adding a redis database then is going to be pretty simple I guess Again, famous last words, but uh, I think that's actually a valid opinion. But first, let's uh, commit what we have, because um, it does work in a sense. Um, Add memory um, feature. Uh, 
Loose change. Adds a memory class to client that works as a key value store. Tests are still green. Nice. So we can also push that. Not going to create a pull request quite yet. More bot coding? So uh, what do you mean? Um, more coding in general? Or would you like to, to see more bot features uh, that are um, user facing? I guess before we go on um, with building more bot features, I probably uh, I probably need the storage and the authorization um, stuff in place. <laughs> so, I guess Docker it is, huh? What do we need? We need a Docker file, and uh, I'll steal that from existing projects. DMP, hello, how are you doing? I hope you're having a great Wednesday. So, Docker file. Uh, is there something where we can? actually steal that um, not from here I guess but from here we can always use the mobs projects docker file oh, of course Ruby on docker not a problem. I'm I'm excellent, excellent, doing great. Um, work is nice and quiet, and I'm having a lot of fun uh, working on this bot project because it's so Ruby. It's uh, pure Ruby. It's Ruby classes and modules and uh, <sighs> tests, all that stuff. I'm I'm enjoying myself here. So, where's the docker file? There's the docker file. Oh, okay. I guess we can use that. Almost immediately, huh? Except that we need some kind of uh, run command because it's not a, a rails application that can be run directly but we can try and, and, and build the container do we have docker running yes we do so i guess docker build should do the trick no it doesn't Docker build um, dash t, isn't it? Is that which? Oh, wait, we need that in the 10x project here. So let's close this and work from here. Docker build dash t 10x latest. Ooh, okay. Okay, now inside our Docker container, we don't have access to the only locally installed TwitchBot gem version 3.1. I'll have to release that first. Oh. 
Okay, that um, raises a few questions in terms of my release strategy. Huh. Yeah, asking myself the same. Uh, can I copy it into the container? I could, of course, have bundle bundler um, create a vendor directory that I could use inside the container as well. not the best way to go about it. On the other hand, hmm. So, um, oh, hey, Julian, hey to you. How are things in your neck of the woods? I, as soon as I introduce a database in here, I need to have uh, the possibility to run my development environment here in Docker. Um, and I need to be able to deploy work in progress inside the container. I don't want to have to uh, release a gem in, in a WIP state. Not only would it definitely pollute my, my uh, RubyGems repository, um, it would also complicate my, my development process here because not only would I have to do a rake uh, install every time I, I modify my library, as I already have to do. Um, I would also have to release updates after updates um, and wait until they are, uh, uh, are available on Ruby Gems as well. So I can then go ahead and pull them back into my local container here. That's uh, no, no, that 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 doesn't work. That's not going to work. Um, So I guess we'll have to go the vendoring way. Correct. It's basically the same as um, Composer or NPM. It um, uh, resolves all the dependencies and um, downloads everything that's available on the internet. Um, and... Um, such uh, similarly to uh, the composer.json or your uh, package.json uh, with npm you have your gem file here and that uh, determines your uh, dependencies so i have some production dependencies here dot env and twitch bot the, the bot library itself is of course necessary for my bot and in development we uh, download a few more things that i can use to debug and to develop stuff um, and Solar Graph, for example, um, supplies VS Code with uh, 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 source code details. And I can actually make Bundler um, install stuff in a local directory. And then I probably have to copy that into my container. The only thing that I can't do then, or that's going to be strange, is how do I then deploy this? So if I say I, I would like to, to run this bot in production somewhere, say, on, on uh, some kind of container hosting platform or Kubernetes, um, would I then want to have my vendor directory in the Docker container? Probably not. 
Well, I, I'll have it anyway. Because I do run a uh, bundler when I built the container. That's a different Docker file than I saw earlier. Oh, I did already have a, a Docker file. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. Let's check out the previous Docker file because that was a bit more simple. Oh, we can keep it. We just remove stuff that we don't need. So we don't need that. Or at least we don't need yarn and node. So yeah, I guess so far build essentially is enough. Guess we need to run bundle config so it uses a local file, a local directory. Let's look up how this is supposed to work. Bundle config. It's a Unix system. Hello, well, Jameson. Is. Welcome to Full Stack Live. Happy to have you here. Thanks for following. I really appreciate it. Bundle config local and we'll have to set the path. that to name value so we'll set path vendor we'll have to run that here as well Now, if I run bundle install, there's nothing changed. However, render isn't yet touched. Hmm. We now have a bundle config file, and we'll have to git ignore that. It is already ignored, okay. And we'll have to ignore the 
vendor directory? Surely don't want to check in. That one? So far there is no mention of the vendor directory in here. Okay, so we're running in this, into the same issue. Um, because now we are um, maintaining our own gem repository for this project alone and separately. Previously, I uh, didn't have a separate uh, gem repository. I just used the one that my current Ruby version was already using. And um, based on that, I could simply do a um, rake install that installed the new version of my gem into this central repository that Ruby uh, uses and uh, use that new version then from the uh, bot project up here. Um, now that we have our own isolated repository, um, I would have to install my gem directly from the gem project or repository into this local and separate isolated gem or bundler repository. And that's not going to work. That, even if I can pull this off, uh, it'll be so brittle and uh, have so strange behavior that I'm not even considering going down that route. Which brings back the question, how else are we going to do that? Looks like a bit of a catch-22. F. Hmm. The Ruby image is not derived from Ubuntu. I think it's Debian, yeah. It's uh, a current version of Debian. And we should actually use uh, 265 since we are using that locally as well. So, it's not feasible. Uh, is it not feasible to pull the dependencies you need from the global repository? No. Or, or is it? See, uh, I that's something I haven't explored yet, and it's Exploration Wednesday after all. Because um, my um, gem file says the source is Ruby Gems, and yeah, Ruby Gems doesn't know of our latest development version yet. Can we add local sources as well? And how will this affect our development workflow? Things to explore. That's perfect for today. Um, Bundler source. I guess we can bundle config. So there is something like multi-source upgrades the warning about the gem file containing multiple primary sources to an error. 
Okay, so we can have multiple sources. We can apparently even have multiple primary sources. I have no idea what that is. Skip default git sources. Local git repos. Bundler also allows you to work against a git repository locally instead of using the remote version. This can be achieved by setting up a local override bundle config. Local dot gem name path to local git repository. That sounds interesting. And that's exactly what Lone Wolf just uh, wrote. Thanks, Lone Wolf. Welcome to Fullstack Live. Happy to have you here. Um, yeah, I haven't used that yet because that's uh, definitely a, a special situation. Normally, you want to have uh, everything in Ruby Gems or in uh, some kind of a private uh, Ruby repository if that's necessary. But um, how to work with unreleased versions? And that's exactly the problem I'm trying to solve here. So we can actually use our local Git repository. Now, instead of checking out the remote Git repository, the local override will be used. Similar to a path source, every time the local Git repository changes, changes will be automatically picked up by Bundler. This means a commit in the local Git rep repo will update the revision in the gem file lock to the local Git repo revision. This requires the same attention as Git submodules. Yes, it does, but it's also very convenient. Before pushing to the remote, you need to ensure the local override was pushed. Otherwise, you may point to a commit that only exists in your local machine. That, yeah, I see what, what they mean. Uh, because um, these revisions will be written to the gemfile.lock. And if for example, I um, yeah, if I have this and I have this gem file lock in my in my Docker file, um, and I try if if then I try to build this Docker container elsewhere, it'll use the gem file lock that then references a revision that might not exist, and I guess I also need to have something like a remote Git repo um, as a, a prerequisite here. Interesting that that's the first section after this list of options here. Okay. So instead of using the remote version. That's something that I'm going to use in my local development here. Okay. That's came from a different browser, so let's open that again. Yes, the, of course, the, these are the basics, no? Mm, I can use... So I could point to my Git repository for the Twitch bot gem. I wouldn't mind doing that, I think. And uh, yeah, uh, by the way, thanks, Lone Wolf. Uh, that really helps. So instead of um, having this dependency here, I could actually use the git reference here because my, my bot will always use the latest version of my library anyway. So in that case, see, um, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm now, now I'm thinking beyond simply uh, solving my, my current uh, deployment problem. Um, I'm also um, 
checking if this is a valid best practice or um, is the, if this is something that uh, I should use in general. And in this case, since my, my bot code is so tightly coupled to my bot library, uh, I think it's actually valid to say simply use what's on GitHub. So that's just the GitHub URL, which still is going to break because our latest storage changes aren't uh, available there yet. Let's see what bundle install says. Mm -hmm. Now it fetches the the this version. It actually does quite a few upgrades here. Interesting. And it reverted back to the latest version available on the repository, which is 301. Which is going to break the bot at the moment. But now... Now we can use this. Uh, yes, I can imagine that um, by referencing for example, a, a certain git ref, um, you can point to a tag or something like that. But uh, it's, in, in this particular case, it's fine as it is. Uh, we are pointing to the master branch and I will always keep master working. So it's always valid to um, point to this repository. And uh, I guess I'm going to make this a local configuration as well. Because I don't want to use this uh, as a global setting, I think. And if I do a bundle update Twitch bot, I cannot use local override for Twitch bot because Branch is not specified in gem file. Specify a branch or run bundle config unset local Twitch bot to remove the local override. Okay, fine. So let's make this more specific. Assuming that that's the right syntax here. Local override is using branch 16 memory, but gem file specifies master. Okay. Uh, that's a bit of a step back because it would actually require me to at least release it locally.
Okay, so what I could do is... No. I thought about uh, using a development branch, but uh, I don't want to refer to a development branch in the official gem source. I'd like to very much have Master in there. And I don't want to have to merge to Master every time I'm building this. So, is there a way to specify a local path instead? Similar to a path source every time the local... Let's find out. Bundler does many checks to ensure a developer won't work with invalid references, particularly we force a developer to specify a branch in the gem file in order to use the feature. If the branch specified in the gem file and the current branch in the local Git repository do not match, Bundler will abort. This ensures that the developer is always working against the current branches and prevents ex accidentally, accidental locking to a different branch. So if I get this right, they try to uh, to make sure that my local repository and the uh, and the remote repository are only a push apart, forcing me to use the, uh, the same branch in both repositories. Interesting situation. Didn't have that before. I'm pretty sure people have thought about that. So, now I question my approach, because I always assume that I'm uh, less smart than other people. What would it mean to work from my master branch here? It would mean that I pretty much had to make to cut releases, and um, that's not exactly something that I would like to do. I mean, there's always the way uh, to to uh, to to compromise and say, okay, I'll run my bot locally here using my current gem repositories uh, just like i've been doing um for uh, for days now and i run redis in a container and simply uh configure my bot to use the containers port that way uh, at least redis will be isolated and uh will run separately from everything else, but my bot will run on my workstation, uh, which 
is something that I would consider, but um, I'm not too happy about. Um, I'm pretty much used to running everything inside a container um, when I uh, do Ruby on Rails projects. So I find it hard to, to uh, deviate from that for this project only because library and application are changing in parallel. I could also throw out the baby with the bathwater and say, okay, uh, from now on, I'll merge my uh, bot library into my bot um, script or, or vice versa um, and work with only a single repository. So I don't have a gem uh, dependency anymore. Um, it's all application source code. But that would be premature, I think. I might actually end up doing it this way because uh, maybe my my bot is going to be um, uh, a very modular thing that um, allows extension by design and doesn't require using a library um, to build to 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 um, provide a foundation. But um, I'm not there yet. And that's a decision I don't want to make today. That's going to have far-reaching consequences and um, I don't want to do that out of desperation. I, if, I, if I do that, I want to do it out of, uh, uh, of uh, clear considerations and... Uh, substantial reasons. <sighs> hmm. So, I guess if there's no way around using a gem Wolf asks if I could use different versions based on my Rails and uh, uh, there I'm not using Rails in this project, so there is not going to be a Rails and but of course I can uh, do something similar. I, actually, I do something similar. I set an environment variable that switches the bot from connecting to IRC to simply running in the local terminal and accepting messages from there. So there is already something in place that could provide that. That doesn't solve the issues, though. But I just had a realization that might... that might actually do the trick. So my thought was, how about... I move a test script and, um, well, my current bot is still pretty much a test script. It's a single uh, Ruby file um, that simply uses the Twitch bot gem. Uh, oh, it's a few more. It's uh, actually three uh, Ruby files here with the plan command handler, the quote command handler and the central client loop. Um, but still, how about I move uh, or I, I create a test script in the gem here that I can run locally, so to speak. Uh, that way I would have local source code instead of uh, having to include the gem. Uh, the gem is the source code. Um, and then I thought, well, 
I don't yet have a, 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 a test script in this repository, but I do have tests. And maybe part of my desperation here and the uh, dead end I'm finding myself is based on the fact that I am still not happy with my test suite here. Since uh, some things are still hard to test because of their design or lack thereof. Um, and um, maybe that's why I've painted myself into a corner here. That way I could actually uh, work on my library, test it with a tests, test bot or with a proper suite of tests, declare a feature finished and release it, and then um, go the official way of then releasing the, the gem and including it in my uh, production bot code and um, simply pulling the updated gem from Ruby Gems. So in practice, that would mean I can pretty much close this terminal up here where I work with my production bot and focus on the Twitch bot repository, work on my features, use proper integration tests or a simple um, local bot script to test my features. And once things seem to be working, I can release a new version and then um, use that new version in my official and production version of my bot. How does that sound? Work in Twitch bot until there's actually something that I can release, then release and then use. And once more, this project has, again, taught me something about development processes, especially if you are developing your own gems. Uh, focus on your gems. If you are working on a gem, don't use an external application to test it because um, it's hard to keep this dependency up, for example, across container boundaries. Uh, let's write this down. Let's write this down. I'm uh, already nearing my um, end time anyway, so let's write this down into notes and learnings. Uh, if you're developing a gem, focus on the gem alone instead of splitting your attention between the gem and the application using the gem. In practice, this means have, an, have a self-contained, is it self-contained? Is that the right term? have a self-contained development environment for the gem, including, most importantly, including a test suite, maybe even a test app. That will allow you to
build a feature to the end, release this feature, and only then use the feature in your real life application. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm really happy about uh, having started this project. I, I was very reluctant to actually start working on a Twitch bot because um, if I'm honest, um, it always seems a bit frivolous to just work on Twitch stuff when you're live coding on Twitch. Um, I know uh, that a lot of people are interested in that, but I thought, um, well, yeah, I'm. Instead, I'd, I'd, I I really prefer working on my real-life work, um, on projects that I need for my business and things like that. Um, and uh, I was always reluctant to do something like a Twitch chatbot. But then I um, realized, okay, I need to um, train my refactoring muscles a bit. And I'd like to do something that's not based on simply applying a framework like Rails. Uh, I find I found that over time pretty boring, and um, just adding new controllers to a to a Rails application and a few more models that's uh, oftentimes really not very challenging. So I thought I'd challenge myself and build something from scratch, uh, and. Uh, I found a Twitch chat library, a gem on, Twi uh, on, on GitHub that hadn't, hasn't been maintained in many years. So I thought, okay, let's pick it. Uh, it does work with a few fixes. It does work, and um, but it's uh, it, it only consists of three classes. So let's do a huge refactoring and uh, build as many classes as they uh, as are necessary. And uh, by now, I've created quite a few classes. Um, uh, so down here. All these here are now classes, and many of these files even uh, contain uh, a bunch of classes. So yeah, the refactoring has been going on, and um, I've learned a lot about refactoring, about applying um, uh, coding patterns, and about removing code smells and things like that. And now I've even um, realized how to really develop. And as you ask, Lone Wolf, uh, it should be testable in isolation. That's always the case, and I knew that. Uh, the the thing that only dropped today is your library, if you're working on a gem, should be testable in, to an extent that actually allows you to release it without having to rely on an outside application using the gem to find out if a feature is finished. Your tests and maybe a small little test application uh, contained uh, in, in the repository should be able to tell you if your feature is finished or not. And if it's not, keep building. And if it is, release it and then start using the updated library in your real-life application. And um, yeah, I'm not quite there yet, I think. So, but now I know uh, what course to set for the next few steps. I'm still working on the memory feature. So, I guess... I'll have to now introduce Redis into the equation and either run Redis pseudo locally by using a Docker container and then uh, accessing it uh, on its uh, port or uh, even uh, try and replace Redis with a, a fake database 
that will behave in the same way as a Redis database and build integration tests using this fake Redis. Uh, that's something that I'll think about uh, until I um, do another stream working on this. Which is going to be on Friday? So the day after tomorrow, I guess I can live with not streaming for a day. I might not. I'm not really sure. So if you don't yet follow my stream, please do so, uh, because that will uh, make sure you get a notification when I go uh, when I come back online, which is scheduled for Friday afternoon. However, I might feel an itch to continue with this uh, tomorrow, uh, and I'm not really sure yet. Uh, also depends a bit on, on my workload. Um, but yes, uh, so we'll go the Redis route uh, and we'll find a way to run Redis for my integration tests, for my future integration tests to work. And we'll finish this feature using this kind of environment, focusing on the Twitch bot repository. And when everything works, then we can release it and then we can uh, switch our focus to the 10x, to my real live um, bot. Uh, and then we'll be able to containerize that, to properly containerize that, because then we can pull the uh, updated um, Twitch bot gem from Ruby gems and it'll provide us with the Redis interface and everything. That's the, the way we're going uh, to go about that. And that's a robust way to do that. I'm very happy. I didn't get uh, uh, Redis working today, which was the goal, but uh, I learned a lot about um, structuring my approach properly. Thanks for following Lone Wolf and Life of Code. Welcome to Full Stack Live. Happy to have you here. Thanks for your support. Um, let me find out if there is someone we can raid before I sign off. Lots of people around. I just have to find out who to choose. Oh, there's fun fun function with a great topic. It's not a really a development topic, but it's how to be happier at work. And that reminds me of my own talk that I gave uh, at the Life Coders conference uh, two weeks ago in front of 13,000 people. And um, so uh, that's a, a topic that is very near to my heart and uh, seeing him waving and signing off. Uh, through a wrench in that. Um, Iton Futura asks, what editor is that? That's uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, Tiku78, hi, uh, how are you doing? Welcome, even though I'm uh, in, in the process of uh, signing off. So let's actually... Uh, Uh, James Q Quick is not has not started yet. Oh yes, he has. Okay, so we'll we'll raid James. Um, uh, help me with this raid. Um, if you can copy the part starting with slash me, we can paste that into James's chat as soon as we raid him and. Uh, that way, um, he'll know that we are here and uh, maybe we get a sandwich out of it. Um, so simply copy the me and sudo make me a sandwich message. I'll switch to my um, standby screen and then we're going to raid him. I'll be back, if not tomorrow, then the day after tomorrow at 4 p.m. 
Irish time and UK time. Thank you very much for all your participation and for watching, and I'll see you soon. Cheers. Thank you.